Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Before the review kicks off, a quick announcement for the DGR Plays team. Hey everyone, Miles Sells Power, all the way from Kid Robot, Miami, Assistant Manager of DGR Plays here. Now, a quick question for you guys. Are you a fan of Valve games? Well, you are currently watching this review video, so it's reasonably safe to assume that you are. And as for the reason why I'm here and I've interrupted James's review, well, take a look at this. Gordon Freeman in the flesh, or rather, in the hazard suit. That's right everyone, DGR Plays is turning the clocks back to 1998, as we played through the game that started it all, with the original Half-Life. As we have stated in a previous blog update, we are going to be using the M mod. This is due to the compatibility fixes the mod has. Sadly enough, this game has no subtitle support. This is because subtitle functions was not considered the standard for the video game industry at the time. We tried to get an additional mod which adds subtitle support to the game. Sadly enough, we had no luck. In any case, we will be showing you how everything went horribly wrong with DGR Plays Half-Life starting this Monday. Now, back to James and the review. What is up everyone? Thus time to celebrate the announcement of the official start date of DGR Plays Half-Life, we review the second entries of the series that broke the barrier between puzzle games and first person shooters. Can she always get the uh, facility, or will she be trapped forever? Will that forever do? Let's find out. The Portal series is one of the very few franchises Valve Corporation has in its portfolio. The first entry was released as a part of a compilation of five games, including of Half-Life 2. Although the game was released for 2004, that fateful year. However, the compilation contained the two episodes for the game, and the long-awaited sequel to the popular class-based shitter, Team Fortress Classic. This particular title was released for the PC, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360 on the April 18th of April 2011. The title was also ported to the Nintendo Switch as a part of the Portal Companion Collection. The game takes place just before the event of Half-Life 2. Now I will try my best to keep this review spoiler free from the original It's Half-Life as possible. The Black Mesa incident More on that on Monday. drew the attention of an interplanetary empire known as the Combine. After the Seven Hour War, humanity has been transformed to a slave race. Meanwhile, in the dormant chambers of Aperture Science, the AI still remains in the facility that GLaDOS and Wheatley kept the facility and its secrets out of the combined detention. Our protagonist, once again, lies dormant in a relaxation vault. It is up to you to navigate through the twisted chest chambers with help and guidance from the GLaDOS and Wheatley. And once again, let's get the facility. The accessibility scores are as follows. Get the ball rolling visibility of a 10. Although there is no colorblind mode available in its interface, but there is very little need for one. There is there are no color-coded elements that will cause an issue for a player with a visual impairment. The two portals colored orange and blue. This color contrast does not affect colorblind players whatsoever. So a player with a visual impairment should be able to play with no issues. Next up, audibility, another 10. This game has closed caption support. That means even the sound effects or subtitles 
This allows a player with a hearing impairment to get immersed in the game by building a mental picture of what's going on in the game as the story progresses. However, there are no fun customization options available in the menus and subtitles. This puts a player at risk of getting any eye strain as the menus and subtitles are read. So this game is very accessible with a player with a hearing impairment. However, more customization options in terms of font size make this game a lot more accessible. Next up, Mobility has got a Sky High 11. In the PC version that was used to test it, the keyboard and mouse controls can be fully customized. What makes this game more and more accessible is that there are controller support right out of the box. The bottom layouts can be fully customized while using a controller and numerous stick layers can be changed on the fly. This gives you more of a choice on which device you want to use while playing this game. This makes the game a lot more accessible when taking mobility players into account. So mobility impaired players will be able to play this game with no issues whatsoever. To run things off, gameplay give it 10. In short, this game is an excellent sequel to the legendary game that broke the barrier between puzzle games and first person shooters. The developers have taken what's good about the original portal and cranked them tenfold. There are new elements to the test chambers, for example, propulsion jail and jump pads, which adds more depth to the gameplay. This game also has online co-op mode. As the name suggests, this allows you to team up with a friend and tackle new test chambers specifically designed for teaming up with a friend or random player online. However, due to the game's age, there are very few people that still play this game online, which is not that much of a pity, as the game is a lot more fun when playing with an actual friend online. In summary, Portal 2 is an excellent addition to the Portal series. In summary, Portal 2 is an excellent addition to the Portal series. The gameplay has a lot of depth and additional modes, for example, time trials and co-op modes, which keeps you playing as you strive to beat your friend's time on a particular test chamber. The game is also backwards compatible. This means that the game is playable on your Xbox One and your Xbox Series S and SNX console. The system requirements for the PC version of the game is very low spec friendly too. If you are a single player enthusiast and is looking for a cheap puzzle game to play over the summer, this game could be an excellent choice. And the overall score is a massive 102.5%. See you guys on Monday for the start of GGR Plays Half-Life. Spark Commander 1980 out. Roll out Spartan Century 